Hello and welcome back to Developer Mode. We're closing out the festive season with one last episode. For this one, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look back at everything that has changed in the Chrome extensions platform and the Chrome Web Store in 2025. And as you can see, we really went all out with the lighting. If you're ready to jump straight to the month by month breakdown, you can use the chapters below. Otherwise, I have some thoughts on the year as a whole and then we'll get straight into it. Twenty twenty five is almost over. A lot has happened. The transition to Manifest V three is complete, and we've launched new platform APIs in Chrome and a lot of really exciting capabilities in the Chrome Web Store. Of course, AI has been an overarching theme for the year. Overwhelmingly, what I've seen is extensions being used as a platform to experiment. Whether that is with new agentic capabilities where an extension drives the browser, or as a way to add smaller pieces of functionality to existing features like tab groups. I think that experimentation with extensions will only continue as technologies like MCP and WebMCP mature. But I'll leave the speculation about where the future is going for another video. And of course, lots has been happening in the community too. Libraries like WXT, which make building extensions easier, have continued to gain adoption. And there have been some great talks on extensions, which I've seen at events throughout the year. So we'll start in January. We launched a new DevTools feature, which allows you to see data stored in the chrome.storage extension API. At the time, a feature request for this was the fourth most starred issue for DevTools. So I was really excited when we released this. I recorded a fun what's new in DevTools video about this feature with the team, if you want more details. Moving on to February, we added support for creating multiple worlds in the user scripts API. That was a bit of a niche change, but work on that API continued into March when we launched the user scripts.execute API. That one had come up a lot as a request from developers and allows you to immediately execute arbitrary code provided by the user as long as the necessary conditions are met. March was also the month when we launched the ability to cancel a pending submission in the Chrome Web Store. That's really useful if you have changes you want to make and want to update your submission immediately rather than waiting to hear back on your current one. This has honestly been a long time coming, so I'm glad we can finally say it's here. In April, we landed some new changes in the Puppeteer testing library to make it easier to load extensions. This was all built on top of WebDriver Baidai, a new standard that browsers have been working together on, which provides a much greater range of testing capabilities when compared to its predecessor. May was Google I.O. month. There are two great videos from that time, so I'll leave you to watch those on your own. Suffice it to say that David, Hafsa and Sebastian were the first to talk about a lot of what I'm covering today. In June, we announced some changes to how users grant extensions access to the user scripts API. Previously, you had to enable developer mode on the Chrome extensions page, but that was a global toggle and it was a bit unclear to users. There's now a separate toggle for individual extensions, which is something largely based on feedback that you shared. June was also the month when many of the built-in AI APIs in Chrome made it to stable. With Chrome 138, you can use the Prompt API in Chrome extensions and the Summarizer, Translator, and Language Detector APIs anywhere on the web, including extensions, all without a flag or origin trial. Our built-in AI documentation has everything you need to get started. In July, we largely completed the transition to Manifest V3, disabling Manifest V2 on all channels for all users. The final piece was turning it off for users of enterprise policy which happened later in the year. Now, I know this has been a lot of work for the whole community, so thank you for working with us. August was the end of a few months of travel for much of the team, with IO Connect in Berlin in June, India in July, and China in August. As part of this, we held a meetup with the Google Developer Group in Shanghai, and it was great to see how big of a community we have in China. Thanks to everyone for coming along. In September, we started shipping various additions to the SciPanel API. This was part of Google Summer of Code, a program where students can contribute directly to Chromium. That included SidePanel.getLayout to determine if the panel is on the left or right of the screen, and unopened and unclosed events. We also shipped some improvements to the errors section on the Chrome extensions page. October saw the launch of the new Chrome Web Store API. This has new capabilities like authentication with service accounts and the ability to update partial rollout percentages. One thing that I'm really excited about here is more detailed API reference documentation and libraries to interact with the API. Using those is much simpler than writing API calls by hand. 
We continued the Chrome Web Store launches in November, beginning the rollout of new publisher pages that show all items from a given publisher. And we also announced support for the browser namespace as an alternative to accessing extension APIs with the window.chrome global. We had tried to roll this out earlier in the year, but found some incompatibilities with Mozilla's web extension polyfill library. So we made a number of improvements to our messaging APIs, and we're giving that a second try. That change is moving through Chrome's release process, and if all goes well, it should be in stable by January. Which brings us to now. It's been a busy year of launches, not to mention all of the various events we've been attending and other things we've been doing throughout 2025. Thank you for being part of the community and watching our videos, and for making libraries, replying to questions from other developers, and generally making this a great space to be a part of. We'll see you next year. Happy holidays. Mm -hmm.